honestly, the, the best thing about metal shaping to me is, is just seeing people that are interested in a craft that's so old and seems like it's kind of dying out and it's sort of being reborn right now. So um, the enthusiasm that I get from the students and, uh, and just, just being a part of uh, someone else's metal shaping journey is, is really, really cool. So oh, really I enjoy nice. that. So I guess I'll start off just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Carl Fisher. I'm from Japan's Customs. Uh, I've been doing this since 2014. And um, metal shaping, I kind of started a little bit later. 2018, it started to really make sense to me. And it's because I took a course with uh, Christian Sosa, Sosa Metalworks. So um, I want to explain what's happening when we're doing tuck shrinking, when we're stretching with a mallet in a sandbag. And, and that's what really kind of clicked for me is like what is actually happening. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do hand metal shaping. Um, one of the favorite ways is, is, is tuck shrinking. So in, in a stump, you pop a tuck into it. And what's happening is that because we've got this peak in here, if you were to just hammer that flat out, you're not going to get any shrinks, right? But if it's inside a bowl or a stump, you've got opposing angles that are allowing your force down to get pushed in. So you got to think about this stuff like it's, like it's clay. Like I think it was Ray Schleen that says metal is clay. I think uh, Ron Covell talked about metal being like dough. And you're, like, when you're rolling through the English wheel, you're really rolling dough. Like That's actually happening. So you're creating surface area when you're stretching and you're actually shrinking the metal together and, and thickening the metal when you're shrinking. So um, these are some examples of the different mallets that you can use. These ones are a little lighter. We actually manufacture this one called the Mother Tucker. It's uh, a bit heavier because I always use steel, right? This is sort of new for me. I don't really do light gauge aluminum that much. But um, one thing that I love about tucking is that you can actually be really accurate with where you put them. And that's going to make more sense when people get into um, more of the paper patterns today like where exactly you want your tucks, right? You can just go crazy and start beating the metal into, uh, into here, and it'll start popping wrinkles or tucks all over the place, but they'll be kind of random, right? So, I mean, you can, you can do it that way, but um, one thing I like to do, if, if I'm actually putting deliberate tucks into material, is that you can actually take an edge and... You can kind of make, make yourself a little weak spot. And that's going to guarantee that your tuck is going to pop there. So that's one thing that um, I like to do. So it's going to be kind of hard for you guys to see this thing. Here, maybe I'll pull this. Out. Okay. This is actually a bit of a shallower bowl than I would normally use, but wherever you want to start your tuck, that's where you're going to hit. And so it'll pop up like that. And then we're going to run it out in the bowl, starting from the inside out. So already you've got like, like I can't even pop that back. Like that's got so much shape in it already, right? So if, if, I, if I keep going, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're close to the edge, the tucks will pop wherever you hit. But if you're starting out like this, you're going to want to like start a few. You can pop the tucks in like that, get a bunch of shrink. I'm sweating like crazy because I got 40 eyes on me. You're doing a fine job. Thank you, sir. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to run these out. Okay, so already we've got a, a ton of shape. And the other thing with hand metal shaping that's, uh, it always blows everybody away is that how rough this is gonna look. Like we're gonna beat the tar out of this thing. It is gonna look like it's irreversibly damaged. And uh, 
and that's just that's just hand metal shaping. So um, <clears throat> along something like this, where you've got like a quite a bit of radius and a little less, there's going to be more shrinks here than here to get that same radius, right? And now we've got like a bit of a reverse curve happening here. If this was dead straight, you would just be forming that over, right? And this reverse curve, if we don't stretch that edge, it's going to actually pull the tank in, which might be what you want, but that's just something to think about when you're looking at the shape. There's a big difference in tuck shrinking to thumbnail shrinking. You guys saw thumbnail shrinking yesterday. A thumbnail shrinking die, it shrinks the same amount the whole length. That's why they're talking about stack shrinking, right? Is that if you were to take a piece of paper and put it over here and, uh, and put all your folds in it, there's, they're like triangles, right? There's more material towards the edge than there is towards the center. So that is what's happening. Like that in a bowl, you can actually get a tuck to shrink more at the end than it does in like towards the center. But a thumbnail shrinking die is going to shrink the exact same amount the entire way. That's why you got to come back and go, you know, to your number one, to your number two, to your number three. Your number one might be one pass, then two, then four, depending on how much shape you're trying to get. So we'll go to the sandbag now. So same thing with stretching. You're going to stretch more in the center than you are towards the outside. So there's going to be more hammer hits in the center than there will be towards the outside. We're going to come back to the stump, do a bunch more shrinking here. Now we've kind of got it going in the right direction and we're close to the edge. Like I was saying before, those tucks are going to pop as we go. Okay, along here I'm going to pop a few tucks in deliberately because it doesn't have a lot of shape yet. Okay, around this edge, obviously we're gonna have quite a bit. This is not a very deep bowl, but we can, we can still tuck this. So we're gonna figure this out.
So one thing you can do as well, if um, if you're trying to get, if you're getting too much shape, basically you can bend it, you can put it out of arrangement so that things flatten out so that you can still get a tuck into it. Um, so if, say we've got too much here, we can, we can always bend it and flatten it out. Now it's flatter in one direction than it is the other, right? So you'll, you'll hear a lot about like in arrangement or in and out of form and, uh, and that is just manipulating by bending, right? You've got shrink, stretch, form. Form doesn't change the shape. You can bend this into a taco, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the shape of the material. So you can always work the material that way if you have to. Back to the sandbag here. Try and make this a little bit deeper. You can actually shrink in a sandbag also, right? Like if you were to get a nice bowl inside there, you'll still be able to pop those wrinkles and run those out. See how many wrinkles we got just by beating on that? We don't necessarily want to have too much shrink there, but we're just trying to get it to come over a bit. All right, normally when uh, I've got a shrinking stump and I'm using this hammer, we've got like a piece of nylon. And if you're gonna make your own shrinking stump, I, I suggest it. Nylon is like nice for grip. Um, so it means that you're not gonna actually slide. Like this isn't gonna slide, depending on what kind of plastic you've got. But at this point, <clears throat> we wanna smooth it out a little bit. There's, there's tons of bumps everywhere. So you just find something that's, like this is gonna be perfect to, to smooth it out enough to get it in the English wheel. Like I was saying before, I didn't actually want tucks there, so we're just gonna smooth those out. We just kinda wanted that radius to start happening on the bottom of the tank. I feel like I got the easy job here today because it doesn't really have to be anything, you know? You're just kind of playing. All right, we've kind of roughed out a shape here. You might want like a little bit more tuck happening here. Actually, I brought a tucking fork. I'm pretty sure I brought it. Anybody know what a tucking fork is? Yep. 
Before I go too far, I want to show you guys one more way to tuck. Um, this is a tucking fork, if you don't know what they are. Make your own, they're just like two tapered pieces of rod and you basically are doing the same thing as what a bowl would do if you didn't have a bowl. So if I wanted to put another tuck right here, we just kind of do that. If I was doing it in steel, I'd have this in a vise because I don't think I'd be able to do it by hand. Anybody heard of capturing the tuck? Couple head nods, yeah? Okay, that's what we're gonna show you right now. So capturing the tuck, so you wanna close the end of your tuck. We don't have a bowl here, so what you wanna do is you wanna come at a 45 degree angle on the end of that tuck, and you wanna see the end of the tuck pop down and it essentially locks in that surface information of your wrinkle, your tuck, your pucker, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to hit that down and see when it starts to do that, pops down, it starts to lock in that information. So this is now not going to be able to just spread out on us just to hammer it flat. So what we want to do is we want to seal that off and, and make it actually fully shrunk on the edge and just leave the little bubble inside. And that's, that's capturing the top. So now that I've got that flat, it's like fully locked in there. And that whole bubble is all the information that's going to get shrunk into the surrounding material. So this, you can actually kind of like run it either way. It's not going to matter too much, um, but you want to always kind of be hammering it towards the center. If that makes sense. Okay, so that's another way that you guys can shrink. So when you're smoothing out a panel like this, um, once again, you can do it in out of arrangement. So um, you always want to choose the flattest um, or the shallowest radius when you're doing this, right? So I've got a certain radius one way. Let's see what this is. Okay, so we got like a two or a three here, right? So if we were to run it this way through the English wheel, we'd want like a two or a three. And you don't really want to do that because you could have something wider and shallower. Um, the wider and the shallower it is, the more bumps it's going to be able to hit. So like I see people doing it all the time where they use a planishing hammer and they'll have a high crown die on the bottom of the planishing hammer and they're trying to smooth something out and you're, and you're, just, you're just stretching it. That's the only thing you're doing because your contact patch is so tiny and right in the center that all your hits are going to be concentrated enough I would want to put this through the wheel this way because I, I, I want to choose the flattest area, right? So I'm, it's going to be like a 36. Let's see what we got here. This is a zero. Okay, 24 is what's going to have to do for us. This is new. I've, I have not seen this before, and I think that's Chris's design. It's killer. Um, if anybody's wondering what that's for, this is so that you can actually index the wheel left and right. And it's not going to matter for us on this, but if you're in a panel and you want to get close to an edge, you can actually tip the wheel so that your contact patch moves from one side to the other. And, pardon me? How hard does it move? Uh, it, this thing looks like it has like a, a wild amount of, um, of movement and that's for like a higher crown die. Like if you put the highest crown die in here, I would assume that it, it moves far enough to get right to the edge of, what is this? Number two radius die. So um, yeah, really cool. The, um, the way everybody used to do it, you know, before this cool design, is that you just shim up the edge. 
So you'd, you'd cut a little chunk of sheet metal or tin foil or, or whatever machinist uh, shims and, and stick it in there. So when you're doing this, um, you don't want it too loose where you can slide it back and forth. You want it just tight enough where you know you're starting to, to smooth out those wrinkles. And I always go with a, a crosshatch pattern. You hear, I've heard some people say that you only want to drive in one direction on the English wheel. And, uh, and that's only one person I've heard say that. I respect them a lot, but it's, it doesn't work for me. I like to, to go two directions. And, and maybe not a direct 90, but like 30 degree X's when you're trying to wash over a panel and trying to smooth it right out. So I'm going to start off with that. And we'll tighten it up just a little bit. So the English wheel does two things. Well, I guess it does more than two things, but you're, you're stretching with it or you're planishing. Right now we're just planishing. We're smoothing things out. You've got to be careful with your pressures because things can get away from you pretty quick, especially with aluminum. Um, so you're watching the marks as well on the material. Like if you don't see the track marks being a direct track, then you're still planishing. You're still just taking highs down to lows and, um, and, and just smoothing it out. So can you explain what uh, getting away from you means? Uh, what I mean by uh, it'll get away from you is you just might stretch it too much, right? And, and, uh, and if you stretch it too much, you're just creating yourself. I mean, a lot of the times if I do that, I'll just start another panel like to, to evenly shrink a low crown that got too big back down. Um, you can let out the edges. And what I mean by that is that um, if, you, if you did pretend you had this big square or a roof skin or something and, and you overdeveloped it, you, you grew the shape too much, you added too much surface area, then you can stretch the edges out a little bit to let some of that back down. And, um, and that might not make sense yet because I don't think we've really covered it, but if you're, if you're growing a shape, with the English wheel by just stretching or by just any, any technique where you're just stretching, you need to leave a frame around that shape to contain the shape. If you were to evenly stretch something from edge to edge all the way around, it would just grow. It wouldn't actually lift or, or get any crown in it. It would just become bigger. And, um, and so that's what I mean by that. So um, <clears throat> we don't want it to get away from us. We don't want to, run over our edges too much. Um, those are all things that can change the overall shape and, and, and do something that you didn't plan. You could smooth this entire thing out in the English wheel and we could choose different dies and we could um, put it in and out of arrangement to get you know the right shape die in there. But we're going to do a little bit of planishing as well with this. Does anybody have any questions while we're doing quiet stuff? No? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> All right, I think we're on kind of our final pass here. You can actually do this completely by hand. Like Absolutely. Um, you just put your dolly into a vise or something that holds onto it, and, uh, and the same deal. Whatever dolly you can find that's as close to the actual shape that you're trying to achieve is very important. Same, same deal if it's got too much crown, you're going to be stretching. You're not actually covering a bunch of the lows with your dolly so that you can hammer down the highs. And uh, yeah, you can, you can absolutely do it by hand. Okay, so we've, we've kind of smoothed out quite a bit, 
just in that center area. Um, we could use, we could do the younger squeal on this as well. We might we might smooth out a little bit of this before we get to the planishing hammer. We've got an eight. That'll that'll be close ish. I'm just gonna rough take out a few of the bumps before we go to the planishing hammer. Putting in a number eight lower anvil. When you're working closely like this, sometimes it's nice to just grab the top wheel and, and, and use it. soft. <laughs> Couldn't do this with steel. One of the things I notice at classes all the time too is, um, especially if you're trying to like fit a part to a buck or, you know, um, to a form like that. A lot of people, this goes back to the whole arrangement thing, right? Is you'll get, you'll get a piece super close and you're like, man, I just need like a shrink right there. I just need, need a little bit more right there. And somebody will go and they'll shrink it and they'll come back and the piece like won't fit at all. They'll get so frustrated. Like it was fitting so close. It only needed that thing. Like, how did it go backwards, right? Um, and that's, again, form, right? So you put a tuck in and the whole panel kind of moves, right? So every time you go to check back to your buck, you've got to spend the time to like really get it as close as humanly possible in every way to the buck or else you have no baseline to check against. You don't really know where you're at. You don't know if you've made any improvements, right? So that's um, something to keep in mind always is that there's always gonna be form that has to get messed around with just to get it so that you can even check it. So that, like, that's one of the things that takes a lot of time and why I feel like I'm cheating today because like, this is gonna look sweet. <laughs> you know, it does, but it doesn't fit anything, right? All right. Okay, I think we're just gonna move on to the planishing hammer now. Um, and now this is one of those things where you can just like pick the radius and, and go for it, right? So we probably have a couple different radiuses here, but let's see what we got. It's mostly a three. I could probably put another tuck right there just to, I'm gonna quickly go throw one tuck in right there just to make it a little more uniform. Okay, with a planishing hammer, it's sort of the same deal as you can be stretching or you can be planishing, right? So if, uh, if you're hitting it too hard, you're gonna be kind of going, going a little bit too crazy. So you wanna start off by just smoothing it out and, uh, and just sort of creeping up on it. 
kind of air pressure you got. Yeah. All right, ears on. Now that one spot that I was talking about has a little bit of a reverse. I am stretching the edge a little bit just to try and take a little bit of that curve out of it. But for the most part, you want to stay away from the edges. It's the same, same idea as what uh, Chris was talking about yesterday with the cleaning, is that you, if you're right on the edge, it's the weakest spot and it's just gonna, it's just gonna pinch it. And it's a really easy way to, um, to work hard in the material and start a crack. And if that crack starts, it's, you gotta, you gotta either shave it off or start over or weld it up and it's, you're chasing your tail. So be careful about that. Okay, so those edges turned out pretty decent. We've got a few little spots here that, uh, like see, we've got this little bit of a low right there. We're already on the planishing hammer. We can just pop that right up. We just need to add a little bit of surface area to grow that bubble up, right? So I probably don't even need to change the die. I can just add a little bit. You can push down a little on it. Well, that happens fast. I probably should have changed the die. <laughs> but we did bring it up, like immediately. Like two seconds, that thing is gone, right? Because we're kind of aggressive with it. So if we wanted to smooth that out again, we could change the die on the planishing hammer, run over the center, or we could go back to the English wheel. So I think I'll probably do a little bit more I see on these edges here, and then uh, we might wash it one more time with uh, the planishing hammer.
die you just changed, was that a flatter bottom die to give you more service contact? Exactly, yeah, I just went to a 36 just to run over the flatter area here. Um, and you see like the panel twists a little bit, like that's, that's where you've got to come back and, and, and check your form against the buck, the non-existent buck. <laughs> Pretty good, you think? Yeah, pretty much. Carl Fisher, everybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs>